What the fuck did my freaking catapult go? SpongeBob, I already told you, you're gonna be just fine. I have been seeing a lot of peacekeepers lately. You made it. Welcome back, everybody. Solid Soul here, and guess what? We're playing some PK and a uh, peacekeeper. I said peacekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, more importantly, and back at the topic at hand, since Brief West Guard was removed, as you all know, I have been playing assassin characters quite a bit recently. I even tried a little bit of Nushia, as brave as that was, and quickly swapped to Peacekeeper, because I wanted to, you know, test my fashion and see if it would actually help me in the battlefield, whereas people would constantly stare at me and look at how beautiful my armor was. I mean, you can't lie to me. You look at this character and you're like, wow, that's amazing fashion, and in that moment, Moment. In that moment, I rob you blind of 15 damage with that top plate bleed. And then, of course, eventually get hit by hyper armor from your teammates or from teammates of my own because I can't do anything in team fights. But I digress. This character is a lot of work, and I wanted to see if she improved ever so slightly. And I'm here to tell you guys the truth. The truth is, is that this character is missing a lot and she still sucks, basically, at the end of the day. Man, sometimes when I'm playing this character for a couple games, I make amazing reads, and I am doing great, alright? I'm just doing fantastic. And honestly, it feels like I'm Shroud playing For Honor. If Shroud actually ever did play For Honor, because his reaction times are crazy. At least when he's younger and playing competitive. And then I just get really tired, and swap back to Hero with actual viable offense and defense, and a wave of relief just washes over me as I pick Warlord and Magi, because I can just hyper armor through everything. And, you know, the game just feels a lot easier, so I don't have to think that much. The main issue, of course, with Peacekeeper is not because of her, you know, crappy offense but the main issue isn't her you know offense or when people external block her and she has no way to deal damage whatsoever and in team fights all she can do is peel and do that forward heavy attack to help your teammate the issue is when i get revenge i foolishly think i can do something but in reality i can't let me explain why real quick usually with any other character that has decent offense or an unblockable mix up you know, there's a way to force reactions out of people, especially in matchmaking, because people aren't really playing their best, and they're usually just chilling or high as heck, which I should be too, getting some Delta 9s in me. I mean, realistically, how helpful is a short sword and a dagger gonna be against a shield and a flintlock pistol with Pyra dancing around and shooting you in the back? Popping Revenge as Peacekeeper usually invites two things, constant heavy attacks and lights and bashes and interrupts, from the enemy opponents, and in some cases this may be a good thing, but with how revenge works right now in this current state economy of Ferran in 2023, the hitstone will waste all of your revenge and you will have no opportunities to deal realistic damage. There are times where I target swap my attacks, and with my small hitboxes, I can't even get in range to attack my opponents or actually get any real pressure whatsoever, and even if I do get into pressure, there's somebody hitting me from behind all the time, and it just doesn't work out. You have to get them bleeding before you get your unblockable mix-up, which is a really fun mechanic, but it just doesn't work out because the DPS is just not there. And there are other times when I play more patiently and things just aren't dying. And here's the thing, and in reality, I just need to drill that into my thick skull that Peacekeeper, with revenge, is basically just a character who stalls for an extra 11 seconds. But in solo queue, good luck with that because nobody is coming to help you, I can promise you. The only time Peacekeeper feels like she is somewhat helpful or bearable is when you're in a good four stack where you can get some peel and you got teammates to come help you. Otherwise, you will be stuck with four opponents smashing you in the face, no matter how well you rotate and wait for all your teams to come back. Because the randoms in this game, they have no idea what they are doing. And that's not such a bad thing because there is some silly stuff that will happen in the game that will make you laugh, but most of the time you'll be crying. So try not to take the game too seriously, especially your solo queuing and picking a character that can't clutch your fights. It can be hard for me personally, but you know you gotta get into that mindset, otherwise you're just gonna blow your brains out like Spongebob. So to all those peacekeeper mains out there who are playing the game solo queue, I think the biggest reason to play her is to essentially have people compliment you while you are in the lobby. Sometimes you get a few comments and be like, oh wow, this uh, Peacekeeper is BEA beautiful. I think I'll have to try her next game. And then you switch to Magi and Warlord and then just destroy them afterwards. See, that's my tactic. That's how I win my games. And that's why my win rate is so damn high. Ferrandra is not your typical third person fighting game. It's more the longs of mental warfare. And I think a lot of people understand that. And that's why there's so many controllers being broken and TV screens being smashed. It's honestly another reason why people spam the wow, 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 and thanks, 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 thanks. Because once you get into their head, the mental and break the 
the other person down, it's basically Joe over for them. Am I wrong here, fellas? Am I wrong? But back at the topic at hand here, with the reflex guard changes being removed, I can now block, all right? I can now block, but I still can't attack. Blocking is good. Being defensive is good. Being able to not get hit by four MS light attacks from externals and have to refresh your guard is a fantastic change, but I still can't attack. Here is what I would do with her, all right? The truth is, is that I'm very scary with my tier three bleed, but that's about it because when I get those triple stabs or even a bleed in general, a light attack, it does a lot of damage. The only other character that's probably more scary with the tier three bleed is Armucha. He's got way more range and way more damage than Peacekeeper could ever hope to have. Armucha is a monster with that feat. I usually don't run it that much, but my boy Popstar likes to run it and my God, buy gum. It absolutely shreds people. The last thing that makes her scary is basically when she decides to become a terrorist with Last Laugh, and if you're not paying attention to her tier 4 and when it's active, well, you can basically say it's Joe over for you. At the end of the day though, I feel quite useless in teamfights because I have no hitboxes compared to Fira where she has ginormous hitboxes. That is really the only buff that could possibly help her in any situation. Heroes that have no hitboxes on their attacks will never be viable in Dominion. That's why Fira is so damn strong because her heavies or neutral heavies or chain finishers, they have such huge hitboxes, especially in team fights. The forward momentum, the hitboxes, the forward momentum on the hitboxes, and even her light attacks have ginormous hitboxes. Couple that in with dodge cancel recoveries, bashes, the ganks, her tier one and tier three where they can stun you and deal a ton of damage, have really quick cooldowns, make her a noob stomper and absolutely dominates the dominion games. Anytime there's more than one Afira, I absolutely lose my mind. And in reality, that's kind of the case with every other character, especially two BPs, because you'll never have revenge at all that entire game. I can guarantee you that much. Peacekeeper is a character that you have to really play methodically. If you just keep attacking with light attacks and heavy attacks, you eventually will get parried. And it's just not worth because if you don't dodge every single bash or parry every single unblockable and the attacks that are external that you you have to dodge out of the way with no dodge cancel recoveries. It can really bring your mental down. If you don't have good reactions and reads in Dominion with Peacekeeper, you're going to have a terrible time. If there's any old gen console players still playing Peacekeeper and Dom, my goodness, you guys are brave souls. So that's why I hope that Peacekeeper is in the next testing grounds because she really needs a few tweaks and a few buffs to her kit. Because here's the thing, whenever I see a Peacekeeper in Dominion, I think there is probably like a few good Peacekeepers that are actually scary, especially when they get you in 1v1 situation and you tend to underestimate her severely and then you just kind of get destroyed with a bunch of bleed. But overall, especially in team fights, my gosh, I, I never fear her at all. You can just external everything, and with her hitboxes on her light attacks and her heavies, you can just be safe no matter what. She kind of just has to take the brunt of all your attacks, especially if you pick a character with really good hitboxes and hyper armor. Her dodge cancel recoveries are basically non-existent and they're not as good as Orochis or Pirates, and so she doesn't have the tools to essentially evade from your mix-ups like they do. And when she gets revenge, you can just kind of hammer her down and she won't be able to do much about it. Even if she parries you and whatnot, her damage is so low that it doesn't really matter if she gets you knocked down. I think it's safe to say I've never died to Peacekeeper ever. Never ever have I died to Peacekeeper unless she has her tier 3 bleed or last laugh. And that's a solid soul guarantee. So let's talk about the fun stuff. Obviously nothing has really changed about the character whatsoever besides being able to guard more. But we still need to make sure that Ubisoft knows what to do with this character besides giving her a feignable 50-50 bash and then giving her, <laughs> what else could they give her? Maybe a pistol or like a submachine gun or something? Or maybe a, a minigun? That would be a good buff for a Peacekeeper. And perhaps make it so that she can utilize her crossbow whenever she wants, just like Pirate. I think that'd be a cool addition to her. And we have talked about changes that I would have done to Peacekeeper in I played Peacekeeper so I don't have to video, but that's a long time ago and a few things have changed, especially the meta. And with Ubisoft giving power creep such a huge momentum, we definitely need to nerf some certain characters and bring them all back to line. But you know, Ubisoft likes to innovate and create some new problems for us to deal with. So the first thing I would do is give her more damage. Her raw heavy, my goodness. I don't know why it does 15 damage. I'd rather have more raw damage than bleed, okay? So make her raw damage like 21 with three ticks of bleed. The, the bleed ticks are very small, but they do work and still it'll help her with enhanced lights and give her raw damage to make her actually scary and so that healing feats 
don't have to negate her entire mix-up, all right? That'd be fantastic. I cannot tell you how many times where I have actually died to people who are all bled out with no HP, and then all of a sudden I get destroyed somehow because I'm bad at the game. And frankly, it is kind of a skill issue, but at the end of the day, I wish I had more raw damage so that I could kill them already and they would just have died to the bleed faster. This doesn't mess with her dueling potential and the way she works as a character, which is fairly unique, where you either get a bleed to get into a really strong mix-up, and it would be nice to actually get some more executions. I remember they buffed this a while ago, but they didn't buff it to the extent where it was fairly consistent. A lot of the times I wouldn't have enough and they would just die after the bleed, and executions are fairly important in this game. They're not the end-all be-all, but they do help a lot. Having the raw damage makes her more formidable, especially in ganks and dealing damage against your opponent. The only thing they shouldn't touch, obviously, is the triple kidney steps, and that should remain full bleed, and you don't need any raw damage there because it's a very powerful tool to deal bleed, and I think it's a cool mix-up, but they really need to adjust her heavy damages because her heavy damages are just laughable. The other thing I like to change is her soft faint light, the top one, making it actually be enhanced and deal bleed chip damage. That way you can actually get into your enhanced lights and if they don't parry that, well then basically you get some offense. I don't think this would be overpowered at all and since you have to do a heavy into a light anyways, I don't think it's that strong and it only comes from one side so if you block top, well then it's basically Joe over for Peacekeeper but it's a fun mix up here and there. A lot of people suggested to give her another soft faint on the other side just like Peacekeeper, I mean just like Shaman and I think that would be kind of okay but it would make them feel very much the same however they do have quite different animations and I would be okay with that if Ubisoft would decide to give her actual offense. It wouldn't make her that strong in like 4v4 but giving her the enhanced properties would make her a little bit more formidable and scary. Because there's so many peacekeepers and people in general in the Dominion games they don't understand externals and once you external someone it's they're basically useless and if they decide to use that soft faint light attack it is basically free parry because shamans also do this too where they think it's a free uh, light attack because it's 400 ms but in reality if you just external her and parry the incoming indicator it, it's basically just a free light parry. The next thing I'd like to change is that after a heavy attack and you get that guaranteed repost for adding bleed damage so 21 damage and then 3 ticks of bleed my gosh let her continue into her unblockable heavy mix up. Yeah, I think it's nice and kind of cool that she has to start from neutral again and get a little bit of frame advantage, but come on, man. Every other character has that unblockable mix-up already that you don't have to get a bleed into and just go straight into it. Afira, Orochi, Warden, everybody. And this is what makes her really weak and slow in damage potential. So if she was able to get that bleed off after the repose and go into an unblockable heavy mix-up that has frame advantage, mind you, then it would make her pretty darn strong and more consistent. And even if she didn't have frame advantage or she would start from neutral or take trades with a light attack, because she does have a little bit more damage, 21 damage with 3 ticks of bleed, it would be fine. But I don't even think you'd be able to argue with that. She should have frame advantage, and she should be able to get into a block with heavy mix-up, because it just makes sense. You don't have to make this character a little bit harder to play, although it would be way more satisfying, obviously, to win your games. But in this state of the meta, I don't think it really makes sense to do that and limit her in that regard, since all the reworks we've been getting, everyone gets basically just two chains of attacks to get into their unblockable mix-ups. They did it for Lawbringer, which is pretty depressing, but it makes them way more viable in the top tiers of play. So I think this change would help her out a lot and make her way more consistent because target swapping your unblockable heavies are really beneficial, especially if they improved her hitboxes to a really large degree, which I'm sure they will do because if you don't have big hitboxes, you're basically screwed in Dominion. You peacekeeper remains gotta tell me, how painful is it to actually not get into your unblockable mix-up and have to throw out that light attack? I mean, it is satisfying to mix people up with a heavy attack and just eat that raw heavy, but my goodness, sometimes you just want to finish off someone really quickly, especially in Dominion, which is what they balance around for, mind you. Remember that, that balance around Dominion now. But they used to balance around a little bit of both or duels in general, but now they focus mainly on Dominion. And I will say they have done a few adjustments for duels, but most of the balance decisions focus around 4v4. So making her deal a little bit more damage more quicker, having a little bit more DPS is way more beneficial for her in the long run of things. So easier access to unblockables after they miss the enhanced bleed or get hit by it is just way more beneficial at the end of the day. Honestly, you could probably just let her go into an unblockable heavy finisher after landing that soft faint bleed. I think that'd be kind of cool. I think this would improve her a lot and wouldn't have to change 
the best parts about her character. And the last thing is of course give her dodge cancel recoveries after every single movie except her dodge attack which I don't think any character should have because dodge cancel recoveries are quite frankly really annoying in the game. Even more annoying than Oathbreaker in my honest opinion. I'm just kidding Oathbreaker is the worst. But dodge cancels after every move would be really nice for her and wouldn't be too powerful especially since she doesn't have the best offense in the game. And I don't think this would be too overpowered in any way whatsoever because it just helps these characters be a little bit more defensive because we do need good defensive characters to a certain degree. What say you though boys? This is my Peacekeeper experience. I think I've had a lot of fun and a lot of cock and ball torture with this character. There are times where I have a great time and most of the time I just want to pick a different character because I'm so tired of playing this hero. And when there's two Peacekeepers on our team, my goodness, it is just... It feels hopeless at times. You have to play perfectly, and there's no team fighting or ganking capabilities with two peacekeepers. It can be very hard to initiate. Unless you have a shaman on your side or a good Nobushi, then it makes things a little bit easier because the Nobushi does a lot more damage when they're bleeding. You can set her up ever so slightly, and the shaman, you can do the shaman gank as well. And if you have good teammates or in a good four stack, then the game feels a little bit better, but still, you have to make the right reads against characters because a lot of these heroes are read based now, and if you can't react to all the animations in the game, well then you're gonna have a terrible time with her. But after you endured all the pain in For Honor, I mean, look at her fashion, it's just top tier stuff. You have to play her specifically for this, otherwise, like, what's even the point? Is your experience the same as mine? I'm just kidding, I already know your experiences because a lot of the peacekeepers that I do fight absolutely just get dominated. <laughs> it's just the funniest thing ever. People who play this character, you guys are brave. You guys are really brave individuals and I salute you. I salute you guys out there and I hope to see you guys in the battlefield. Thank you for watching and uh, more good stuff coming soon. We'll be uh, making some more great videos, not just the normal where I talk about whatever characters I want, but we'll have to do a little bit more editing here and there for you guys. I think For Honor views are down right now because there are new games that are coming out that are a little bit better than For Honor, but of course, people will eventually come back to the drug that is For Honor and start enjoying the game a little bit more after realizing that other games are not as good or don't compare. Except for Mortal Kombat 1 is pretty darn good right now. I've been seeing a lot of good things about it and it's been, is pretty popular at the moment. How have you guys been enjoying that game? I'm probably not going to play it because I don't really like the 2D style platform gamers and all of the characters that we get to choose from, the Vikings, the Samurai, and the, you know, the Wulin, all that stuff. I love them. Whereas Mortal Kombat doesn't really have that flair that I wanted to. I think that's a personal opinion, of course. So thank you so much for watching. Of course, we're going to stay with For Honor because For Honor is the GOAT and there's nothing like this drug out there in the world, maybe besides crystal meth. I'll stick to cocktails and mom wine. Thank you very much. Appreciate all of you guys being here. I will be making a third channel, so be sure to check me out there and also a tier list coming out very soon. Bye-bye. See you later.